Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, a Choosing Beggar is happy to move in and spend all our OP's money. Shocking behavior for a Choosing Beggar, isn't it? Let's jump right in. So there is a guy I met at a bar via mutual friends. We kept drinking together for a few weeks when he tells me his lease is ending and he can't find a new place to live because he has lost his job. I, being a nice person, tell him that I have a spare room and he can come crash at my place for a week or so until he finds a new job. After two weeks of living at my place for free and doing nothing more than sleeping all day long, eating my food, I was the only one buying food since he didn't have a job or any savings, using all my things, etc. I told him that he needs to find his own place and I'm not willing to fund him anymore, him being a 30 year old man. He starts making excuses. Yes, I know that should have been a red flag and told me he got a job and is starting in a week. I believed him and let him stay for another week. He actually did start working, but he quit after just one day. Again, I asked him to move out and he told me he already found another job and just needed one paycheck to get back on his feet and then he can get his own place. This scenario kept running for around two months, in which I found out that both his parents are doctors and they live five minutes away from the city. At first he said they kicked him out, then he changed his version to I don't want to burden them and to they live right outside the city and it's far to get to the pubs I like from there. By that time, him just being there cost me around $800, $150 only for coffee. I buy expensive coffee and he drank a lot of it and another $100 for a new charger for my laptop that he broke not including his share of the rent and bills which he said he'll pay. I tell him again that I want him out. He asks me for time just until the end of the week so he can sign a lease. It's necessary to say that he was actually working at the time. I agree and leave for work for the night shift. When I came back in the morning he greets me, tells me he found a place and by the end of the week he can move in. I was happy for him and for myself that he will be gone and went to sleep before another night shift. When I woke up for work, I found out that he packed all his things, took what was left in the fridge, a few of my things, just random things like toothbrushes and paste, a few empty notebooks and such, and just left. I tried calling him and have sent him messages, but never got an answer. Later I found out from many mutual friends that around the same time period he asked them for small loans, like $100 each, and different favors, and then he just disappeared. If there is a bright side to that story, it's that he disappeared. Story number two shows us a choosing beggar who shows her true colors when it comes to her hamster. Several years ago, I befriended my college boyfriend's ex. I was on good terms with Mike. His most recent ex, let's call her Lisa, had just moved near me and didn't have any friends in town. She seemed cool at first. We hung out a couple of times, including a couple of outdoor concerts for which I provided all the picnic food and wine. She was kind of boring, but things seemed fine. One day, she texts me asking if I would take care of her hamster while she was out of town. I figure that hamsters are easy to take care of, so I say yes. She drops him off in his plastic habitat and I go about my day. That night, I'm woken up at 2am by this darn hamster spinning his wheel non-stop. I get up, take the wheel out and go back to sleep. The next day, I discover that not only has he escaped his habitat, but that he's chewed holes in my purse and shoes, little flipper. He escapes several times over the course of the week despite me trying everything I could think of to keep the habitat secure. Cut to the following week, Lisa has picked up her stupid hamster. 
One night, I have a huge family emergency. My 20-year-old cousin has been murdered. Not joking. Sorry that this has taken a big turn. I'm at my aunt's house. I'm distraught. It's the most traumatizing night of my life. And I get a text from Lisa. Hey, I just noticed that the hamster wheel is missing. I'm having a family emergency. Okay, but when can I get it? My cousin was just killed. I'm sorry. So can you drop off the wheel? She continues to call and text for several days, but I ignore her because what the flip? One night, I get a text from her saying, This flipping witch stole my hamster wheel and is refusing to give it back. She won't answer me. This text was apparently meant for Mike, our mutual ex. I go off on her saying, My cousin was literally murdered the night you kept asking about that flipping hamster wheel. This has been a horrible week and I couldn't care less about your hamster's toy right now. I'll leave it in the bushes outside my building and you can get it whenever the hell you want. Don't ever contact me again. But what if someone steals it? Story 3 shows us a choosing beggar brother who thinks that if something isn't being used, then it automatically becomes his, even if it's only not being used right now. This story is about my brother who's the biggest choosing beggar I know. I have many stories like this, but this is one of the most recent ones. I own an iPod Nano 7th generation that I purchased last year, along with a pricey sound system with an iPod dock attachment. I use it at the gym and at home, but whenever my brother comes to visit, I don't have music going and I keep the TV volume down. He is autistic and loud noises bother him. We are both adults, so this isn't a petty sibling thing about who gets to use the remote. He came to visit one day and immediately spotted my iPod and the sound system. The following conversation was his subtle way of getting what he wants, but I never fall for that so I could see right through him. Be forewarned that conversations with my brother are as awkward as this dialogue, and his reply to an answer he doesn't like is to ask it again and again until the answer is what he wanted. Oh, what's that? That's my new iPod and dock. Yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, I love it. So, what's been going on with work? I'm trying to change the conversation, knowing where it was going. So, how much was it? Let me just say it made quite a dent in my savings. Do you use it? Yeah, of course I do. I can fit way more music on it than my old one. He would tried the same thing in 2009 when I had just gotten an iPod Nano 5th generation. Nah, you don't use it, do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, hey, do you want me to order pizza for lunch? But you're not using it right now, so why can't I have it? I'm not using it because you're here, and it costs me a lot of money. Why can't I have it? You can just buy a new one. I spent all my money on this and can't afford another one. You don't need it though. You can live without it, can't you? It's mine. End of story. You can buy your own if you want one. He very rarely listens to music anyway. But I... No. End of story. Not going to happen. Now, do you want lunch? I can order pizza or we can get takeaway if you want. My shout. The key to my brother's heart is through his stomach and saying my shout made him immediately forget about the iPod. I know him well enough to know how to change the subject quickly. The best way to tame a choosing beggar is to offer to pay for something. In story four, we have a choosing beggar who buys a shirt off eBay. He gets what he paid for, but that doesn't mean he's happy. Dear supplier, due to the nature of my profession, I can only purchase authentic items. If otherwise, please do not deliver. Kind regards. Hi there. We purchase all items from reputable businesses and are very confident in the authenticity of all of our items. You can see tags, etc. in pictures provided. If you are not happy at all, then let us know and we will cancel the order. Thank you. Thank you for the swift reply. You have clearly stated that you have purchased this item from a reliable supplier. As it is authentic, please do go ahead and post. Kindest regards. Dear supplier, the t-shirt arrived in a very poor condition due to the way it was crammed into a small envelope. 
I will return. Alternatively, I can take it to the dry cleaners. Hi there. The t-shirt is brand new and in a new condition. Please attach photos. If you're not happy with the item, please send back in a brand new unused condition as you received with tags for a full refund. Thank you very much. I acknowledge that the t-shirt is unused with a tag, however, it makes no sense why it's delivered cramped in a small envelope. It was a padded brown envelope to ensure there was no damage to the item. Please return for a full refund if you are not happy with the item. We will be happy to fully refund you on receipt of the return. Thank you. Please specify what kind of delivery you wish to pay, first class including recorded delivery, or second class, which in that case I hereby confirm with this message that I cannot take any responsibility in case of lost in post. Once again, please do accept my apologies as I will not iron a new garment as it will look second hand. Kind regards. Hello. I'll be taking over this case for you. I understand you have a problem with your item. No worries. Hopefully we can iron this out for you. My colleague has offered you a return with a 100% no questions asked refund. This is still an option for you. However, I'd like to clarify as per our return policy, we do not cover return postage expenses unless there is a problem with the item due to a fault on our end. Creased clothing, unfortunately, does not constitute as an error on our part, and you've clearly stated that there is nothing wrong with the item, and you can clearly see on the image in the listing that there are creases in the shirt. Please also note eBay's policy, which does state that you are indeed liable for all returns, and it is your responsibility to ensure that returns make it back to us in the original condition you purchased it. We also politely decline your offer for having the shirt dry cleaned at our expense. Thanks, kind regards. Okay, in the comments, please let me know if I'm the only person who thinks it's normal to wash clothes before you wear them after you buy them. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.